Welcome everybody to step one of the day three lesson on sectionalism. This is a very, very short lecture on the background information you need for the Dred Scott case, which is going to be the main focus of your lesson today. And so this is going to be our template now of our lectures. They're going to be very short. I'm going to try and keep them to under five minutes. Um, and so what you see above me are going to be the main topics we cover. And as you'll see, they'll highlight blue when I'm talking about them. So if you're having to rewind, you'll have that advantage of knowing where they are. So let's jump into it. So Dred Scott case is your focus today. We're gonna to talk about background real quick. So first thing we have to talk about is the Supreme Court or this body right here. The Supreme Court is the highest court in the United States. If a law or a ruling is considered unconstitutional, what you can do is you can have it appealed, meaning that people can try and have that case again and, and hear and see whether or not it is constitutional or not. At the Supreme Court, this is the highest level, all right? It is composed of justices. These people are responsible for determining whether or not a case or a law is constitutional or not, whether or not it is legal under the Constitution. We also call the Supreme Court SCOTUS for short. Um, most people don't, but it's okay. You can also call it that if you want to. So the Supreme Court, its main job is to determine whether or not other rulings are constitutional or not. So for us today, for Dred Scott, we're going to have the Supreme Court deciding whether or not the ruling that had been passed in the lower courts for Dred Scott is constitutional or not. Now, what that's also going to involve is going to be kind of a little bit of a background in slavery that we've talked about right before spring break. So first thing we're going to look at are fugitive slaves. We've talked about fugitive slaves right before we left for spring break when we were talking about uh, social reform. And so fugitive slaves are going to be the really second important topic we have to talk about. And so the one thing we have to understand, otherwise this won't make sense, is what does fugitive mean, right? Most of us know what it is. If you don't, that's okay. That's why I anticipated that. Fugitive means a person who flees or tries to escape. And so a fugitive slave is going to be a slave that has tried to escape from a plantation to get away as a form of resistance. Um, and so we've seen this picture before that I'm throwing up here right now. We see the five white men in the background shooting at these fugitive slaves who are trying to run away. And so resistance for slaves is a very important topic. We spent a good bit of time talking about that. And for fugitive slaves, this is a very, very um, hard decision to make. But again, one that is really going to kind of shape the way slavery works in the 19th century. And so for us, understanding the ways in which slaves can get away, can break away from slavery is really important. What we're going to see today, though, is that actually Dred Scott uh, is going to use the law to actually try and resist, which is unique. Uh, that really doesn't happen that much. Now, a little bit of refresher here on the Underground Railroad. The Underground Railroad is created by our good friend Harriet Tubman, who's doing a great job. Um, Harriet Tubman is one of these people that we talked about again before we left. And Harriet Tubman creates a lot of these different avenues and it becomes well known for the Underground Railroad. Now, the Underground Railroad, again, are these different routes from the South. As we can see here, we see Virginia, Kentucky, Tennessee, North Carolina, all considered the South, up into the North and most terminating there or in Canada because Canada does not have slavery. And so, again, what we're seeing is these are all the different ways that these different groups can try and break away from slavery, resist it in some form or fashion, and try and change the way that um, labor works in the South. Now, again, our big focus for this entire unit is how do the North and the South begin to act differently? How do they begin to realize, hey, we're not that similar anymore? And so fugitive slaves, helping out fugitive slaves, um, having a large part in the Underground Railroad, and then these large cases in the Supreme Court play a huge role in how Northerners and Southerners deal with each other. So that's it. That's a really short little lecture again for the background of what we need moving forward. The next step that you guys have is to take what I just said really succinctly, shortly, and clearly give me kind of feedback on these major points, uh, making sure that I understand that you get the background before you jump into the actual lesson on Dred Scott. So hopefully that helps. Hopefully there are no questions because you'll have to contact me through Google Hangouts. Otherwise, go ahead and get started on the Dred Scott case. Good luck, guys. Hopefully this has been a, a, a nice first week for us. Good luck on Dred Scott. Bye-bye.